Welcome yes. to the Dan the Wolfman podcast. Swati Cap, Sabadi Mai. I got Duck Man, stunt actor, Ron Smornberg. How you doing, sir? Welcome, finally, to meet you. Welcome. Uh, yeah, I'm here in Thailand right now. It's in the morning. That's eight o'clock. <laughs> and uh, yeah, thanks. Thanks for having me here on the show. Yeah, it's good. You're getting some publicity. We've been talking for about a year and a half. Of course, with the C-1984 bad flu thing that happened, we haven't been able to get together because we're like, oh, yeah, let's get together and do a, a fight scene together. Um, so, guys, Ron has been in the business for a very long time, like 24 years now, something like this. Yeah, absolutely. I, in movie business, I am 23 years. Okay. In martial arts, I think uh, almost 40 years. So, so, guys, if you're not familiar with him, and uh, lately my, our friend, Viking Samurai, has had him on uh, quite a bit, and I guess he just got a shout-out from uh, Stephen Wonderboy Thompson, so, uh, or Thomas. So, um, you know, anyway, let people know just a, a bit, who are some of the big-name stars that you've had fight scenes with? Uh, okay. One guy told me like you should you should put all the names like you might can have a, a long list, and I'm I'm quite uh, yeah yeah impressed myself like wh what is this list like uh, I'm very fortunate to be honest I, uh, so let's start I think Jackie Chan, uh, Tony Ja, uh, Donnie and I didn't fight him but we worked together he was my my coordinator and director who was that uh, came... who was the last one. Uh, that was Der Puma. That was a, uh, a German series. Okay. A German TV series. It was very cool. I learned a lot from Donnie. Uh, Kane Kusuki. He is the son of Sho Kusuki. Oh, you yeah. know from the, the Ninja uh, movies? He died He's in great. one of the Ninja movies. He was in the beginning and he died in one of the... Like, yes. When a little kid. Yep. Yeah. And we fought each other in a Tekken part two. La Tony Ja, of course, I fought with him like three times. Um, there is Gary Daniels. Oh. We had a, a short fight, some, some good uh, acting scenes in the movie Hitman in London. We have Steven Seagal. I fought him two times. Um, uh, who else? Tiger Shroff, uh, Akshay Kumar, Salman Khan. They are all in India, like they are big superstars uh, over I'm there. I'm friends on Facebook, and I say, I want to fight you sometime, and he always like likes it. Uh, Kumar is like the really buff uh, Indian yes. act, like pretty actor, right? But he, <laughs> he, he's very um, muscular. Uh, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. They, they have this kind of race, kind of like arms race in India, but with, yeah. with muscles. Like who is the, the most muscle, muscular actor there? Like it's really like a challenge between all these actors there. It's a little bit like the 80s. Like Arnold back in and the 80s. Sly, like, like Sylvester Sloan and Arnold Schwarzenegger trying yes. to outdo each other. I think they're back in the 80s over there. <laughs> but it's, you know, it is motivating. It's, it's okay. That's cool. Yeah, for the rest, Marco Zaror. Marco is great. Uh, we worked on Sultan. That, that, that fight was never released, but uh, we, we did a great. Marco is, uh, he's now with Scott Atkins in working for John Wick, uh, by the way. Hmm. Marco Zaror. We did a test fight for, for another upcoming movie. Uh, we didn't start shooting yet, but we did a test fight, which was great. Marcus Aurora is uh, he's the real deal. Yeah. Um, he's from Undisputed Part oh, yeah. Three. He was the yeah he was the, the final fighter, the Spanish kind of fighter, when he fight with Scott Atkins mm -hmm. in there. Um, who else? Yeah, Eric Roberts. I haven't fought him though. Um, yeah, it's quite a lot of people. I, th I think. That's about it. There must be two or three more, but um, Iko Uwe's. Uh, I got I got shot by okay. Iko Uwe's in triple threat. Um, Seagal, Gary Daniels, yeah, Jackie Chan, of course. Uh, Jean Claude Van Damme, Jean Claude Van Damme, in uh, the Eagle Path, which is an, an upcoming movie, but we shot that uh, ten years ago. Oh wow! <laughs> yeah, yeah, it hasn't been released yet. Yeah. Oh, is that is that uh, his is that his pet project? The one Viking Samurai said he's been trying to release forever. 
I don't know if it was like in French or like uh, that's his personal project, right? And he keeps kind of his personal it. project. Yeah. Yes, French. Okay. Well, for the time, I mean, of course, it's ten years younger, the ten years younger Van Damme. So it might be interesting to release it now. Um, yeah. yeah. There were some funny man. things going on in that movie. Some funny things going on with, with uh, that movie, uh, but some some crazy stuff. But but you know those are those are stories you always remember. Well, guys, he's worked with a lot of big names, obviously. So we'll break it down uh, to kind of each of those. But let's go back and start. And yeah, it's nighttime, me guys. It's, he's having coffee. It's my nighttime because of time difference. So I'm just gonna relax because I gotta get up early to do some action action stuff tomorrow and um you know besides in a t-shirt people assume like i'm just a typical old guy they don't realize that like i got okay. guns my oh. guns used to be the size of slide they might be bigger now it's like 18 and three quarter uh yeah. when i do stunt, stunt double sloan at the end he went home early in the morning and they got me just shifting the volkswagen car because it was a volkswagen commercial so my arms had to be like pretty much the same size you know wow well. But uh, awesome, yeah. You, 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 very buff. Like, yeah, wow. I'm big. I need, I need to lean up. I need to get ten pounds off. But I can do that easy for a movie. Is what people don't realize. You know, uh, that's yeah. like ten days. I could lose like a pound a day if I cut out all carbs and do some cardio and stuff like that. Um, yeah. So, how did you start in martial arts? And where did you grow up? Let people know. And let's go back to Little Round. Let's give a little bit of your background. Are you there, Ron? Okay, we had a freeze for a moment here, guys. So maybe I did too much flexing. I broke, I broke Zoom. But it is in Thailand, guys. So maybe, well, maybe I can pause or record it. Let's see. Now, okay, we're back, guys. We're back, guys. Ron is in Thailand, so we had to take a little pause there. Hopefully, it's pretty seamless. For you watching after 20 seconds or so so um ron give us the background on little round who is little round what were the first movies that got you interested or is that what got you interested in martial arts where did you grow up and uh let them know about the martial arts in your country and stuff like that please okay well i come from a small uh a small village in holland it's called nieuwegein very small village so there's not much to do and I was always an insecure kid and uh, very uh, skinny. Uh, and then there was this movie Karate Kid. So Karate Kid was the first movie mm -hmm. I saw, which was basically the underdog, right? Who, who learns karate. That's why I started too. That's why I started too, so, because we're about the same age. So that's what got me started as yes. well. And if you track back that movie, technically wise, it's, there's not much like choreography or special combos, but it's just the way it's made. Yeah. It's just a story. It's very beautiful. So that did something to me. And we started, we, we all wanted to do karate. Uh, everybody in the room in, in this birthday party wanted to join karate. Mm -hmm. At the same time, there was young master of Jackie Chan okay. on TV. And with this amazing ant fight, with this, uh, with this kicker, this, this Hapkido guy. And there was um, uh, the other, the, the master, the ninja master. Maybe you know that with Lee Van Cleef. You know, oh, yeah, yeah. The, 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 yes, the ninja star. Kind of thing, yeah. Yes, everybody was doing that. Everybody was like making their own swords, you know, cutting themselves, uh, making ninja like the, the stars. Do you remember uh, what, what year this was about, or how old were you when you started martial arts? Oh, I, I, I think I was, that time I was 11. I just went to the a bigger school, and it was a big transition in my life. Okay. And I literally got got bigger, literally from a very skinny guy, mm -hmm. like 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 you can see the ribs, till build a little bit chest. And it, over the years, I I, I got more confident, and, and it, I started to do tournaments, and I loved it. I wanted to be like blood sport. Now, that, you, that, you know, years later, there was blood sport. Was it Kyokushin based karate right away, or what did you start in? What style? Okay, I started uh, judo when I was seven, but I, I just did it for very short. So mm -hmm. I think that doesn't really count. Um, yeah, karate, Kyokushinkai. 
I, I was 11, Kyokushinka. My master looked a little bit like the master in the, in the Karate Kid. He looked like him. <laughs> if you see his picture, he looks the same. Yeah. So it was all this, all this mystery, all this mystery. So I did a lot of tournaments uh, when I was young. I got to the, the Dutch like championship. I, I got, uh, I was number one uh, for oh, the for karate. It was, was it full contact? Punches to the no, body, kicks to the head and legs? Or as kids, to be I, don't honest, know, I don't know what they do in Kyokushin for children. Yeah, it was Kyokushin for kids more. Like I, to be honest, it was semi contact, like point fighting. Okay. And but but then the 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 the, the task, the challenge came after blood sport. We wanted to do more contact, me and my friend. Hmm. So there was this free fight opportunity, free fight. Two policemen started to teach free fight. They started to experiment with a mix of styles, like like wrestling and judo and kickboxing and Kyokushin and silat. Mm -hmm. but full contact and I had a black belt already karate and we came there and they they thought we were showing off so they gave us the biggest lesson of our life mm -hmm. they beat us up they beat me and my friend up they thought we would never come back <laughs> and I remember me sit taking a bath being all bruised and stuff now but was we this came back the like UFC, UFC was late 93, and then in Europe, they did call it under the name Free Flight. So was it like guys mixing everything together and doing some grappling, like 94, 95? Is that what we're, yes. we're talking? Yes, okay. yes. Like, like in the period of the first UFCs, you know, when it was still like a big diversity, still. It, it, didn't, it, didn't, it wasn't the MMA like now. Yeah, it was still, still like, very much style versus style, at least until like... UFC 9, 10, Don Fry, Mark Coleman came along. And even still, it wasn't, it yeah. wasn't, wasn't until later where everyone realized, oh, we should do kickboxing after Wayne Smith kicked Mark Coleman in the head. And they're like, oh, yeah, this, this kickboxing thing, we should probably start doing striking too. <laughs> like legitimate yeah. striking, not just barroom brawling. Though I, I came up under Dan Severin and I was taking oh. out with sparring partners. So I go back to those old, old guys. Yeah, me too. Yeah. And yeah, it was it was interesting, like with the Gracies, right? And they beat all these bigger fighters at the time. And, and it was very interesting. And there was even some Dutch people participating in that. Yeah. Like I, some, some, yeah, I know about yeah. Strun and stuff. And there was Leon Jike, Leon. There was quite a few Europeans and Holland guys uh, that were pretty early on in Pancreas and Wings uh, and, and stuff like that. Uh, when you said yeah. they beat you, beat you up, do you mean they were, like, taking you down and, uh, and grappling you and stuff? Or what happened when they beat oh. you up? Okay. So first, <laughs> we were still living in the dream world. And uh, I was, like, probably 16 that time. We came in and we, we started to talk about Van Damme, right? Like, Van Damme is an idol. And they already said Van Damme can't fight. And you're doing fancy high like, kicks because that's what you're great at. And they think, oh, this, this fancy kid, we're going to show him. Show them what real yes. fighting is. <laughs> so that was the first disillusion about Van Damme. That was in the, when we changing clothes into our, our gi, right? Like Van Damme can't fight. Like, what do you mean? Like, he's the best, right? <laughs> we were like that. And then at the end of the class, the class was tough. Like, like even some, some marathon runners, they came. They couldn't keep up. With this, this, they were tough, those teachers. And at the end, the main teacher said, Ron, you're wrong, right? Okay, let, let's do. So I was trying to do high kicks. And I was used to the semi contact. So the thing is, he didn't stop. So after he hit me one time, he kept going and he got me on the floor and he kept going and he got me really heavy. And every time I tried to do something, he just stopped me, like stopped me off, like with a front kick or with, and, and I wasn't used to it. Mm -hmm. And he really got me. So we, we were black belts, karate, and it didn't mean anything. <laughs> like we had, a, and they expected, they were laughing. We never came back. Like, so he, and he, he saw them coming, like, you know, those Mawashi Giris and the Ura Mawashi and, mm. and even the sidekicks. And I had my tricks, right? I had my tricks in semi-contact fighting, like the fake moves. He just saw everything, this guy and, and my teacher. And he just like sw swept me to the floor. And, and yeah, I was just looking at the ceiling for many times. Mm. And then we started to pick up on throws, on wrestling, on all that stuff, and and we became more all round, which still I still use in movie fighting right now. 
I'm very thankful for this free fight. Yeah. How long did you train with him for? And what was his name? Uh, for like nine years. Oh, wow. Long for long. like nine, yeah, nine years. Even after Who Am I, I still kept training with one of the teachers. And, and it was always challenging. But there was still not the BJJ in there. Like the modern BJJ, mm. it's, it's, it's still a little bit the old way of wrestling and, and judo. And, and the modern BJJ, I, I, I didn't do that. Yeah, I mean, so, back then, I kind of idolized that style. And I looked, I watched Pancrase in the rings and shoots wrestling, but it wasn't technically as tight and, and uh, tightness and positioning as uh, modern Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. But yeah. um, I still love watching the old Pancrase, and eventually I fought in Pancrase, and eventually was the color commentator of Pancrase on UFC Fight Pass. So I still like that style, but they gave a lot of space when transitioning. Sometimes from position to position, they use case and katami uh, a lot, scarf hold a lot, um, and things like that. So it was a little different, but it gave you, you know, how to throw and go into an arm bar and how to the different positions. Um, yeah. So so that's really uh, that's really good. And was all that training was that in in Holland near, near your town, or had you moved by that point? Uh, no, that was still in Holland, and in between I went to Hong Kong. For like almost uh, yeah half year, mm. uh, and and then I went back to Holland again, and I resumed the free fight, and then I went, I made the decision to go to Thailand, and and do a kind of small series over there, and then Tony Jaa was in Thailand, and then I stayed in Thailand. So but the free old, fight was in Holland. How old were you when you did your first experience as an extra? And boom, because of you able to hold a kick super high up. You got that experience to do the final fight with Jackie Chan. Uh, we don't yes. have to get into it because Viking Samurai, uh, our friend, has gotten into it quite well. Yes. But you were very young, and that was the first thing you had ever did, which is crazy. People yeah. don't understand. That's like a <laughs> I don't know 180 beat fight. Most guys, stunt guys, you come in and boom, 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 and that's it. Or you take one kick over and over again, you know. Or you're the stuntman in Batman that just falls down for no reason. Maybe that was an extra. That ruined the shot. Yeah. <laughs> but but yeah. um, you were very young. And that was yeah, I was 23. 23. 23 years old. And I was like, still young. And that was like eight minutes late um, too. Yeah. If it was an Indian movie, okay. It would be maybe a little easier. Or, or But fighting Jackie Chan, who is used to this rhythm, who is one of the most demanding people in the business, together with Donnie Yen, straight away, that is like driving a race car with a normal driving license yes. and enjoying and riding a Grand P. And everybody, I think, should understand that. So they yeah. were talking to me on set about third, third dimensions, like, bam, 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 these rhythms, things. But that is really when you're in the business for longer because you can't just do that straight away. Oh, and nobody can do that. Even barely anyone can do that anyway, even experienced guys, because, I mean, I've been in the yeah. business quite a bit and I've done some stuff. But I haven't done an eight-minute fight scene. Not with Jackie yeah. Chan, where it's beep, 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 beep. I mean, <laughs> yeah. but, I mean most fight scenes yeah. is like, da doom and the girl killed you, and boom, and then you fall down. And one, two, yeah. three, most, a three-hit combo or something. Like, maybe you practice a nine, you know, at auditions, they'll do like a 12-beat thing or a 24-beat thing yeah. at most. So That's it. Yeah. It, and some people, people fought Jackie maybe for three, four moves. And they say, oh, oh, it's easy to fight Jackie, but it's not because a full fight with what you said, those 12 moves is a different story. A and, and to remember it was okay, but it's this timing thing and the distance. I would never hit Jackie though, because I luckily that saved me was my leg control. That saved me to, to I would never ever hit him. And there are some people talking like you hit him in the face and stuff. Well, that, that never happened, of course. They would use that in the documentary. That would be gold. Yeah. Of course, right? Uh, but yeah, yeah. It, of course, it's not easy. So was that the but first I, time? I up. Was that the first time I, you went to Hong Kong, or was that the second time when you got that? Well, well, that time Jackie came to Holland, and 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 he did a movie in Rotterdam. That was Who Am I? Oh, that, that, and, that's right. Okay. Yes. So so I was there, but so I was an extra first on set, mm -hmm. and I kind of show the videotape and they saw that with this i had this this kind of high high kick record on there 
and some leg holding. And, and, and yeah, they, they wanted to see me in real. Like, what is this guy? Can he do that for real? And so I had to show the leg holding and, and some, some combos. And then they decided to, to put me in the end fight of the movie. So actually, man, this is a beautiful story about a guy with a, with a dream. And people never took me serious, but I always wanted to play movies. Yeah, I know. I mean, I've had people do me very dirty in the business too. We'll see if we get into some of that. That's the way it is. And people's egos and they want you to do bad or they use you and abuse you. I've had some very yeah. bad stuff happen, which makes me go, ah, I don't care if it happens or not. Or maybe I'll go independent movies, make them in Europe, and I'll be the next Steven Seagal. So um, yeah. go to, go to yeah. Thailand. Maybe go to Thailand soon when they lift some of the you know 14-day hold and stuff. Maybe I can join you um, someday soon. But okay, you do that, and then you go back to your regular job. Yeah. And you're you're in Holland, and then eventually you said you went to Thailand. So how how long were you back in Holland just being a regular guy? And then was your next move off to Thailand? Yeah. The thing was that I went to, I saved some money. I went to Hong Kong because there were a lot of promises after Jackie Chan. Like, okay, this is going to happen, this. But it never happened. So I just saved money myself. And, and my stunts did, didn't do good for me. So I, I almost had to change my name. I, 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 I got money. I went to Hong Kong. And I played there in two months in three movies. But then I came back to Holland again. I had to come back. My money was finished and there were no movies anymore. So I was, uh, I was back in Holland for five years and I had a girlfriend and I wanted to have it all like a family, uh, a girlfriend doing movies and it just didn't work out. And the movies were calling, it was calling. And luckily a Dutch TV host in which I was in an interview before with some, with some action mm -hmm. said, let's do a TV series, let's go to Asia. So we spoke with the K1 uh, organization of K1. You know the K1? The, the, yeah. We spoke with them, K1 Holland. And it, it, it didn't happen in Japan. There was another contact in Thailand. He said, you know what? We have a sponsor. Let's go to Thailand and, and start a TV series over there. And the TV series got stolen. The idea in Thailand got stolen by, by a TV um, company. They like the idea. <laughs> that happens sometimes. No. But Tony Jaa was there and we were about to go back. And I said, wait a moment, like Tony Jaa is shooting Tom Yam Goon. So we managed to go on set. And I talked to the director of uh, this movie, Pacha Pinkao. And it's weird, I could show him some moves on set. And he said, you know what? Uh, it, it cannot be a one-on-one -on -one fight with Tony Ja because we already finished the movie. But do you want to be part of a group fight? I said, you know what? I'm so happy to play movies again. Let's do this. And then Tony kicked me in the face. And <laughs> he said, in, in, in the fight, but you know what? I didn't care. I, I was so happy to be back. You know? Was that it just was all of, good. Was that one of the chasing scenes where they're chasing? And that's, that, uh, you said the Thai name, uh, in the Ong Bok, right? So uh, was that one of the scenes like he's getting chased through the streets and the carts and all that kind of stuff? You were, was that one of the scenes you were in? Well, that was the movie Tony Jaa got famous for. That was Ong Bak, where he runs in the street and, and jumps over stuff, yeah. slides under. I think that, that took them six months to prepare, like this whole movie, like, like all the fights and stuff. Which one, and, which one were you in? Uh, I was doing Tom Yam Goon, so that is the Basically, the, oh, the, the second movie, Tony Jaa. Tony Jaa, like the second movie. The elephant, the elephant one, the protector? Yes, yes, okay. yes. So it, yeah, it's marketed as the protector uh, in the West. Yeah, protector, exactly, exactly. In, Th in Thailand, they call it Tom Yam Kun. Yeah, I knew the name, but I, I miss, miss, miss yeah, uh, uh, which one it was. Yeah, um, so we were fighting, and th that elephant, like the bones of the elephant, this was the moment when he see his personal, his... The love of his life, the elephant, like like that. There were just bones of this elephant left. And then the moment he looks at this elephant and he realizes it's his elephant, he cries. And and to be honest, we were we were all like crying with Tony Jaa because he did his acting was great. Like he really was, he was really crying on set. And then we had to fight him because we were his opponents. So I had to kick him first. You just see a lack of me. I had to kick him first in the stomach. 
But then later he uh, he makes it all right with me kicking me in the face with a kick the moon twist. He asked me, can I kick you in the face? And I said, yeah, yeah, uh, why not? <laughs> so later, much, I was like, oh, how, much con yeah, how much contact did he make? Pretty, pretty, I mean, not enough to knock you out, but a good smack, right? Yeah, a few were, to be honest, were here. Yeah, he, he could actually control it. But if I, my face went a little bit this way, it would it would be in my nose, but yeah. but no, he he's he's in a good control. But it looks but amazing. Hard. There should be some contact. A lot now are the all the young guys are starting to be. Uh, let's just yep. say all these young guys that are now stunt coordinators that don't deserve it. They seem to be threatened by other people that maybe are actually better martial artists than them, and they don't want any contact. And so it looks so bad nowadays. Beat 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 like it's so fake. And there's no contact. There should be a, a, you know, you can hit someone in the body like 60, 70%. And you can hit someone in the face like 30%. Like that doesn't even bug me. And if you're a stunt guy, you should be willing to take that, I think. As long as there's a difference between a little bit, tiny bit of pain and injury. You don't want to injure anyone, but I think it looks better in Tony Jaws early movies because there's contact. And quite frankly, the Thai stunt people are crazy. You know, they, 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 need, they need any money. So they, you know, flipping and falling, and I don't want to do that, but I don't care if someone tags me a little bit. I don't know if you agree with that. So let's get Ron back in right now, guys. So I just think that you should be able to make a little contact and make it look a little more realistic. And I think a little more, little contact and a little more intensity and not beat, 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 beat. It looks so overly choreographed. So many yeah. other stuff now. All the young guys, they're not tough guys. And they think they're something and they're nothing. They're not good martial artists. And they're, they're calling yeah. themselves fighters because I can go. And it has no power. And like, and these, yeah. some of these are the people that are working all the time because they're big ass kissers or they go party and do stuff with, with the people involved. And that's how they get jobs is by, by, yeah smoking their own buddies and stuff it's a really kind of a the business used to be really good when i was in california yeah. years ago um yeah there were some really good stunt coordinators there were some people that kept their word to me and said kid you know i said i want to get into this business i was an extra uh let me tell my story it's, uh, since i'm on it i was on the yeah. uh, the set of the tv show chuck and um I went and talked to the stunt coordinator and he didn't, I've had some here in Atlanta last year and stuff. They just put their nose up in the air. Don't even look you in the eyes. I'm like, oh, no, I've worked on, I've worked on CSI New York. Uh, I've worked yeah. on NCIS, Sons of Anarchy, Rio Steel, Couples Retreat, like, you know, big, big name stuff. The Ugly Truth, like, I mean, big, big shows. And they, they, they won't even look at your resume. I'm like, hey, here's my resume. And they don't even look at it. It's disgusting. Oh yeah, it's disgusting behavior uh, because like they're teaching fight scenes or gun stuff and they don't know what the f they're doing. There's people working as the uh, coordinators and stuff and and uh, the, the fight coordinators or the um, tech supervisor, the weapon stuff, and they're faking everybody out and they don't know what the f they're doing. I know what I'm doing. I just went through a SWAT school. I know the real deal stuff. And some of these guys are doing stuff that they did 15 years ago. That isn't the modern yeah. stuff at all. And so the point is when I was on Chuck, uh, a young hyped up kid like you were like so happy just to be on a set, right? And, and I'd already done some stuff, but I wasn't sad yet. And I'd go and talk to him, say, hey, can you give me some advice? And he took the time to give me advice. And he says, kid, what you need to do is you got to do this and you got to get your sad card. And when you get your sad card, come back and talk to me. He goes, how about yeah. I give you a little, you want to do a little thing? That stunt guy over there, I'm going to tell him when he's running down this hill to kind of brush you with his shoulder. You're not going to complain or whine about that, are you? I said, no, no, that'd be great. That'd be awesome. Just, yeah, that's fine. I'll do whatever. He's, I'm like, should I go down? Or he's like, yeah, he's not going to hit you that hard. Just, you know, take the hit. I'm like, okay. Yeah, take the hit. Yeah. So I did that. And I'm not in union. And, and I keep my mouth shut. And I don't complain. And I get... He puts out a little $50 um, 
special ability bump, you know. So it's not even a SAG voucher. It could be if I, you know, but I didn't. But this guy years later kept his word to me and uh, eventually brought me on a brought me on a chuck. And so I he can't even see me, unfortunately. Just we're, we're like three of us fighting one of the girls. I think it was the main blonde. A really funny show. I haven't watched it in a while. I used to love that show. Awesome set to be on. She kicked, you know, kicking me in the head, round kick. My neck was so sore. Yeah. Round kick after round kick, like right, falling right. From this- at the side of a bed in a bedroom fight. And uh, my neck was so sore. But he kept his word to me. Unfortunately, he passed away. He's got a wife and I think four beautiful daughters. Um, um, but, uh, you know, he kept his word. And I, I'm, I'm just not seeing it. You know, some of these old timers like, oh, you fought him. Yeah. They, they knew I was tough. They gave me respect. Oh, you trained with Judo G. Mabel? And now I go like, now I'm a black belt under Judo G. Mabel Goker and a black belt in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu and a black belt in karate and a black belt in Taekwondo. And then, and then I, I've seen some of them, the coordinators and some. I say, oh, I saw on your uh, online resume you did MMA and grappling. And then they don't want to handle that conversation because that means they did like five classes of Jiu Jitsu. And they're claiming jujitsu and MMA on their friggin' resume because they think they can do a hip throw in an armbar. That doesn't mean you're a real grappler like me. Yeah, yeah. And I'm not saying I'm above you, but I'm just like, here, here, I've done real stuff. I'm a real martial artist. I'm a real firearms expert. I'll do whatever you say. But they're so threatened by it nowadays that they, yeah. they basically blacklisted me, it seems like. So I went off on my bed. I should be interviewing you. But the point was some some people used to keep the word and let you do it and they let you have a little contact. And you know, yeah. I just think the business has changed. It was always well, a I, I prefer business. the contact. Yeah, it makes the fight scene look so much better. Yeah. So it doesn't, you don't have to hurt each other, but hit a little bit, kick to the leg, kick to the yeah. body a little bit. That because it helps you sell it. Like you're great at selling it too. Yeah. It helps you. It helps you sell it ugh, as you get hit. Otherwise, yeah. the timing sometimes is like a microsecond off, like hit and then a sell. Right? Like yeah. it helps. It helps everything look better. Yeah. So you know, if you're getting, claiming to be a stunt man, so you got a little lumped up. I'm not saying broken ankle, broken nose, or missing teeth, but a little hit. You should certainly know how to roll with something. Yeah. So you go to Thailand now with what? With some of these people involved in K1 Holland and somehow you make a, you said they stole a TV show. I had a TV show, I think stolen as well, by the way, from one company gave it to another company. Plus they gave it to one of their friends and I had a complete idea of this kind of military competition TV show. Totally my, totally my thing I gave the yeah. company. Especially when you're young and excited and you, you don't know the business too much, they know where they can get you. So sometimes they let you even continue on your project and then they take the script or they, it happens a lot. Yeah. And, and that, that's what we said about the business, about loyalty, right? About loyal people, like loyal coordinators or, or uh, yeah, I, I'm a little bit like you. Like I like the people who are loyal to each other. It, it's the martial arts spirit. And I'm, I'm getting on well really with, with real martial artists yeah. like not the people who just like to show too much it's the people with the real martial art uh, mentality and background and i prefer that and a guy called mark stas for example he's a real martial artist and when we have a fight we go for it and we hit as well yeah what you said like it's the best way have, of acting you both have real ability even in something you choreograph in one day and film with him looks Yes. A lot better than uh, all, all the other stuff, you know? Yeah, sometimes it's too fake and you can see it. Like it's, it's too much show. And it's sometimes also when you have to fight with girls, it's hard sometimes to sell a girl beating a guy. It's hard sometimes. So I just tell them, hit me as hard as possible because at least it's more believable. But, <laughs> you know, like you need that. I, I had a, a Belgian stunt coordinator coming to Thailand on this Van Damme movie. And I told him Thailand is a little bit more hardcore than Europe in, with stunts and getting hit because, you know, they in Thailand, they go for it. Yeah. And it's real. And he was laughing like, oh, man, you keep doing your 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 stuff. Keep doing your hardcore stuff. And I, I will just do chair falls in, the, in, uh, in Holland or, or Belgium, whatever he came from. 
stair, uh, chair falls, falling from the chair. So <laughs> that was how he made money. But I, 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 I was not joking. Like in here in Thailand, they, they, they hit each other quite well. Yeah, maybe, and, maybe I should come to Thailand and, you know. I yes, you would love it. I have, I have a, a Filipino stunt guy I talk to sometimes that, that also told me to, you know, uh, about you and uh, um, the two Indonesian guys from the Raid movies. I, I don't pronounce their names very well. Uh, but you know, I love. I would love to work with those guys. I mean, I'm I'm big. I'm like two fifty. I would lose like ten pounds for a movie. I'd be down to like two thirty eight, two forty, uh, and look at you know, so my face isn't quite as fat on yeah. screen. But um, I'd love to. Yeah. You know, I'd have a fight scene with like those two guys. That'd be crazy. <laughs> I'd love to. Do I think stuff. we would. Yeah, I would we like would to be work. a good matchmaking. You and me would be a nice matchmaking because yeah, I'm shorter. I'm five eleven and wide, and you're what six. Yeah. How tall are you? Six two. I am six two. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So I mean, the the the, the you know the, the Netherlands people, the Dutch people, Holland people, they're tall, <laughs> tallest people in the world. Yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah. And yeah, um, yeah I think it would be great. Um, so so, what happened with this Thailand thing? You said it was kind of. What happened with this Thailand thing? Did it did it get taken and nothing happened, or did you end up filming something in Thailand? Well, so so yeah, so this TV series was just uh, didn't happen. So so I stayed in Thailand basically. My boss left, uh, and I stayed in Thailand to keep pursuing my. So Thailand became my base to travel to China, to India. There were movies in India, Indonesia, Vietnam, but Thailand is an amazing place to live and. And everything is fighting, you know, even the, the TV series here, it always ends up in a fight. No. So I, I got I got into into TV series in Thailand as the main uh, the main bad guy. And they like bad guys in Thailand, like people start to remember me. So actually it worked because I could do my own choreography. Mm -hmm. And in a lot of Hollywood movies shooting in Thailand, you just they, they, they just tell you uh, one punch duck. And but in the Thai series, I could really be myself. Oh, so true. it worked out. It worked out. And it got you were, you were about 29, 30 at that point? Yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 25 or eight, 35. Oh, you were already 35. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. They yeah. really I, start taking off to you to your to you were like 35, and it was the Thai stuff, and maybe a little yep. bit over in Hong Kong or a little bit in India. And then finally you just hustled and got whatever you could from wherever you yep. You could get it. Yeah, that's it. And and at some point you realize, okay, this is the ceiling. Because we are in Asia, right? We will never be a main good guy. That's what it is. Like if yeah. you go to China, you will be a bad guy. And they will not even tell you why you're bad. Because you, you are just bad. You're just the four. I, mean, I know. I, I, know. <laughs> I mean, and, and I've done three pro wrestling matches in Japan. And I'm the heel, you know, I'm the gaijin. I, the third time I acted really crazy and I was like, ah, I sound like the wolfman and <laughs> taking the ropes and they, like in this tag match I did. Um, and so you kind of get- I can imagine. Yeah, you kind of get, uh, and then I, I, they, they sold it, the wrestlers, because I surprised them, because it's quiet in Japan. And I'm like, eh. <laughs> and both the guys- Yeah, yeah, off yeah. Um, They love it, they love that. Yeah, yeah, yeah me too, in Thailand. I had to do crazy. Like I was injecting myself when I when I start losing the fight. I injecting myself with some kind of chemical, and I got more crazy. Like ah, like that, and and they love it. They said keep keep overacting. Like, you can't <laughs> use that. Yeah, you can't use that for Hollywood. But they're like, who is this? Who is this it's guy? Fun, it's fun to be the bad guy. I mean, I I'm I'm yeah. that guy. I'm the tough guy, thug. Especially if I grow a little facial hair and goatee, or I'm a cop. That's all I am. And but that's okay though. Like now at my age, I'm ready to be like, no, I want to do some stunt acting, have a role. And I think like doing a Seagull type movie and out for justice type movie, I think whether I get some of these guys I really know to make it uh, in the U S independently, or maybe in, in Poland or, I, you know, if I can be a star in something like that, I think it will take off. I think I still have a chance. Of doing my own yeah. thing like that, where, yeah. um, because in your, I mean, he didn't start all those original movies above the law out for justice until he was like 40. I'm yeah. 44, 
Uh, but I think if I do it now, I think in like all over Europe and Russia, it will blow up. I don't know if it will sell everywhere else, but eventually Netflix and, or wherever it ended up, digital streaming. But I think in Europe and Russia, I think they're going to eat it up. And I think America is so soft now, but half the yeah. country wants to go back to the 80s, like Viking Samurai talks about. They're, they're tired of this BS. I think they're ready for characters like Stallone and Seagal, early Seagal, yeah. the first five, six movies. They're ready for a little bit, you know, because they're trying to teach people not to be manly. They're anti-martial arts. They want the martial arts gym shut down. They want the weightlifting gym shut down. Why? Because people that work out and do martial arts think for themselves. Yeah. They don't get told so easily what to do. So oh, absolutely. It's kind of a war in the world right now on basic, uh, you know, personal responsibility, let's say. Because yeah. I tell my, my, my YouTube people, I say, do 51 push-ups a day if you're under 40 years old. If you're over 40, do 51 push-ups every other day. I'm trying to get my YouTube followers to do this. I say, send me a video. Yeah. No one sent me a video yet. But people that are dedicated to... Uh, whether it's weightlifting or martial arts or some kind of personal bettering themselves, especially physically, that usually relates to mentally and spiritually and like living a life like the golden rule and, and uh, laws of attraction kind of way, like you've done. I'm going to do it. I'm going to be in a movie. And Ron, you have done it. You're a good, you're a good story. No matter what people said before, you yeah. did it. You did it. So we now keep that going. you're doing things in Thailand and, and India and stuff, when was the, the first next famous guy after Jackie Chan? Who was the, and then you got one kick from Tony Ja. Who was the next kind of really famous guy that you were able to interact with? I think that was, I think probably Scott Atkins. Hmm. Uh, that was Van Damme first, Van Damme, and then Scott Atkins came. Uh, with well, the Ninja. Yeah. Tell me about the Van Damme thing, because, I mean, you were 16 years old talking about Van Damme, and then yeah. now you're on a set with Van Damme. How did that happen? What happened? Tell us some of the stories. You said some funny okay. things happened on okay. it, because that okay. is amazing. I, I still, I just got Peter Malone at a Facebook friend, finally accepted my okay. friend request after 10 years ago, I talked to him about being in blood sport to Kumite. They were going to do Kumite, and he was going to use me as a fighter. I'm still reaching out to his wife and stuff. I still want to get kicked by Van Damme in a movie. His, his new movie just yeah. came out on Netflix. So you you as a little boy were looking up to, and you, you became a master kicker, especially. You looked up to Van Damme, and boom. How do you get on a Van Damme movie, and what, what was that like? <laughs> well, uh, I was, to be honest, I was very nervous uh, <laughs> for the first time to meet him. So, so we all met up, like the guys who got chosen by the casting, they needed like, like bodyguards and stuff and to fight, to fight him. So there were like 10 guys, 10 guys. And we had to meet downstairs in the lobby in a, in a big hotel in Bangkok. And then we had to go up to his big room. He had this big uh, penthouse and we all sitting there on the couch. And then Van Dam walked in and he knew me, he recognized me. So he said to everybody like, look guys, you're all gonna listen this and this. He was cool. And then he looked at me and he said, hey, you're not going to do those kicks like you do in, in Who Am I in this movie? I said, of course, of course, you know, like he thought he warned me, like, don't do those kicks you did in Who Am I? And I was like, OK. <laughs> and it was a little bit funny. People were like, OK. But there was a very big guy next to me. And he said to the big guy next to me, I know you. Van Damme said it to the guy. And the guy said he was nervous said to Van Damme, I, I think I know you as well. And he said, yeah, you were the guy from the club who threw me out of the club like years ago, right? Oh, no! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the big bouncer. And and after that, that, that guy next to me never came back. So, and that guy, but he, he didn't want to admit it. He said, yeah, probably, maybe. And, <laughs> and Van Damme recognized him as well. Like he got thrown out by that guy. Oh, he lives in, uh, in LA before. As a I just started bouncing again at a uh, <laughs> uh, very, uh, you know, girls yeah. that don't like clothes type of place and um, holding it against a yeah. bouncer. We're just doing our jobs. We're just doing our jobs. Exactly. But he recognized him. Uh, 
and he got nervous like oh no that's not me but uh, i said maybe but yeah that was the guy who threw out van down out of the club so yeah of course that was his last moment in, in the hotel room but the third guy he he looked very tough he was a, a foreign guy but a thai boxer like an arab kind of guy and van damme told me i like you i'm going to give you this special name uh malik malik i think it means king or something in 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 uh in Arab language, yeah. and the guy said, "Yeah, you know what? I don't like that name. I want you to call me the Lion." To Van Damme, huh? I want Whoa. you to call me the Lion. And Van Damme said, "What?" In front of everyone, Van Damme said, "I thought about for two days about your name, and you want to change that to the Lion." And then he said, "I think you, you should go." And the guy had to leave. He left, Man. and he he got fired. But the thing is, the guy was like me. We love all of them down. So the first shooting day, guess guess who showed up? Now it was not the bouncer. <laughs> the, the bouncer never came back. The guy came but, with a shirt that says Malik on it. <laughs> yes. The third guy who wanted to be the lion actually yeah. came back in his Muay Thai pants. He came back ready to fight and show Van Damme that he is, he didn't accept he was fired. And we were like, he was ready to fight for real. He was angry. And we were like, shit, that guy is there again. You know, like, we don't know what to say to him. So we went to the set to another location in a garage parking uh, to fight with Van Damme. And he, he went with one of the, the staff members to the set. And he was, we were, we were like rehearsing with Van Damme. And that guy was standing like a fighter, like this, bam. Like, we were like, this is going to go wrong. He was ready to fight. He didn't accept that. He was in the parking, that guy. And then we had to send some bodyguards, like not, not the guy next to me, but some other bodyguards to send him away. Like he was ready to fight. And we were all like, like he didn't accept that. He got fired by Van Damme. But Van Damme himself was great on set, you know, in the, in the, in the movie Eagle Path. Um, he kicked me in the nuts. He throws me to, to a, a pillar. My head bangs to the pillar and throws me into a pipe. Um, actually, my head got cut open, mm. like like uh, from the impact. I was a little bit too too overexcited, so I took the hit. They stitched it on the spot, and we kept going straight away, <laughs> basically. But Van Damme, really nice. He, he took care. He said, uh, "Take some uh, Pepsi, no, not Coke, not Coke, Pepsi," and <laughs> and he put me in the fan. And he said, Ron, uh, you know, take care of yourself. And, uh, and Van Damme is really, he, he, he is as I expected. Like, of course, sometimes he, he, uh, he's very passionate, mm -hmm. but Van Damme is really, he's pure. Van Damme is, is, a, is a real human compared to some guys you mentioned before, like some fake people in the business or yeah. some, you know, Van Damme is, is it's the real deal. And I think he's I really, I think he's really changed. I mean, he's, he's, you know, kind of elder now. I mean, he's getting up there. I think he's definitely changed over the years from his younger years. And so this was what, about 10 years ago that you, you did this film with him? You go back. Uh, sorry, sorry. It was okay. about 10 years ago that you guys filmed this. Yes. We 10 years ago. Yeah. Yes. 10 years ago. I think even, 2009 probably 12 years ago already okay 2009 so, yeah and that's that's his like pet project that he's never quite released that he was really trying to make a statement about things and stuff viking samurai had a video on it and it keeps changing yeah. the name and almost like yeah. almost got released a few years ago and still has it and one wonders you know and i'm sure you're wanting just to see a couple clips of footage you can get off of it because you never know in editing uh, would be nice. It would be nice. Would be yeah. nice. Yeah, yeah. And he he loves Thailand, so he came here for a few other movies too in the past, like The Quest, uh, Street Fighter. He was here before. Yeah, so he, and, and of, he did Kickboxer too. Yeah, Kickboxer. Of, yeah, of course, of course, Kickboxer. So a few a few of the coordinators I work with nowadays, mm -hmm. they work, for example, on Kickboxer. They worked on Street Fighter. They, they were all part of that, like the older coordinators. They, they know Van Damme, like from other movies too. 
Well, John Claude Van Varenberg, JC, and also Peter Meloda, who I know I wrote you the other day, put us on, please. We'll take the best kicks from Van Dam. And, uh, yep. you know, please, it's oh, yeah. too much to big kids like me and Ron, even though we're big oh. guys. <laughs> yeah. He gave me a good uh, Maigiri, a front kick, a good one, in my, in my stomach uh, as well. And he's controlled, but he has power. Van Damme has power. Like, he has some power in his legs. Like, I'm sure. Some good kicks. Oh. And I'm sure you do, too. Like, you can't be that good of a kicker and not have some power oh. and precision. Yeah. I mean, you just can't get to that level without having yeah. something real, obviously. Yeah. Um, Actually, but- my speciality was doing hard kicks. Like, when we did the free fight, we we tra- transferred from the, the semi contact to full contact, yeah. so they, they they taught us to kick through the to the to the the how you call it pads. Yeah. And it took it took time. It took time, but once we got it, because we were flexible, we could use the we 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 got some power, and and yeah, it was kind of the selling point. But then my ACL popped, so now when I do a hard kick on the back, my my knee kind of pops out. It's very scary. Yeah, I, I'm having that issue myself. I just got my MRI report. So uh, uh, it's been a few months since I did some high kicks. But when I did, the last video I did was uh, with uh, showing some combinations on uh, Henry 6'4". But I still was getting it up there to the, my left high kick. I mean, it still looks really good. I just got to warm up now that I'm older. I just got to make sure I warm up really good. Uh, so I think I still got it. So, I, you know, um, but that's interesting. So JC, come on and get us in a in a, in your next movie, uh, if you would, both of us. That'd be great. Um, so then you went. You said Scott Atkins was next, and I recently called out Scott Atkins on uh, Viking Samurai's channel. Everyone just badmouthed me because they assume it was to a real fight, but obviously I was trying to get our friend Viking Samurai to make a movie or make a video praising uh, Scott Atkins. So uh, we'll get Ron back in here in a second. We got a double round now. Okay, Ron, you back? Yeah. Okay, let me ask you a question yeah. be- before we continue. Um, okay. Does, does Zoom usually allow you? Can you record a long time on Zoom? I should Google it. I didn't do it beforehand. I don't know if I need to make separate, separate videos. Zoom. It I'll- should do. It oh, should well. record all the videos separately. And because I had it with David as well, and sometimes it just in and out. It happens. It, it's. I just don't know if they have a time limit on the data that you're allowed to record for. You would think they would let you know. Um, yeah, it, it should be saved. It should be saved on your phone probably in separate files. It should be. Because like it's when you record and press pause and record again. And I think it should be okay. Okay. But I you were talking I, about the high kicks. Yeah, so I, I want to let guys, sorry about that. We're, I, I'm going to hope that everything works out okay. I'm just going to leave it be, I yep. think, recording. Um, so I, I still got it, and people don't realize it about me. I can do kicking. I can do MMA. I can do I can do some Wing Chun. I can do some Kali. Oh, I love it. I mean, yes. I, can, I can do all different kinds of fighting, any kind of fighting. I can move. You know, I, I've gotten hired to do Sistema for Metal Gear. That people don't know about, you know. So I, I, you know, I, I can do all kinds of stuff, even though, you know, I, I'm built like a, you know, a mob collector or something. I mean, but that's how Rocky started. Worked out pretty good for Stallone. So, yeah. on to Scott Atkins. So now to Scott Atkins, how did you get on with him? And I would love to fight you, Scott. And obviously, I hope you watch more than the first five minutes and everyone goes, oh, this guy would get killed by Scott Atkins. Like, <laughs> real fighting is real fighting and film fighting is film fighting. And I'm not saying yeah. all film fighters can't really fight compared to the average Joe. Of course, if they're a true martial artist. But real fighting and film fighting are kind of, you know, different. Yeah. But I just wanted to film fight him and get Viking to make a video on Scott Atkins because he hasn't done too many. And I thought Scott deserves some praise. And it looks like he's getting in on John Wick 4. Or so uh, being a huge John Wick fan myself, and maybe someday, you know, I can fight Scott myself. Yeah. I was hoping it would happen. I was talking to a producer on the last film he was doing with Dolph Ludwig. 
So I was hoping okay. to get in on that, but I didn't for whatever reason. So. Yeah, you never know. Uh, it's it's quite complicated the business, and the uh, the best people are not always in the best spot. It, like as you said, like people are joining together, have their parties together, or networking, or put other people's down before they put themselves up. Or there's a lot of things going on. There's the gatekeepers. There's all these things going on, and so it's not. It's like real politics. The best people are not always on the top or 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 with the top, and and. So you just you just do your best, but you cannot control everything. So there's a lot of politics going on. But Scott, to be honest, he's he's very pure. And we were in the same days back in Hong Kong. Scott was around. So when I was doing some movies there, he was also trying to get in movies, like back in 2000. And I heard about this guy called Scott Atkins. There was a guy called Scott Atkins. He was perfect. Like he said, he could land on every spot. Like he was very good in gymnastics, so he could do some very cool kicks and land exactly where they wanted it. And that was what I heard about Scott. I have never met him that time. And then he did Extreme Challenge. And then I saw him doing Boyka and all this uh, undisputed, Scott. And then, yeah, he came there for Ninja too. But um, that movie, sorry, that movie with Donnie Yen, the TV series in Germany, Scott supposed to be on there, but there were some things with his manager, so I did it instead of him. And then some people were joking, like, oh, maybe Scott is getting angry at you. And uh, But yeah, he couldn't do it anyway. So so I, I never I never had any problems with that. So when I met Scott in uh, Ninja 2, uh, I was lucky. They wrote me in the dojo scene. It was a nonstop scene uh, with no cuts. It was like one and a half minute, two minutes. And basically oh, I grab him and he takes over and it's it has to be perfect, like the timing of people coming in. Was like that the same, the same um, um, director as Undisputed, the karate, uh, the karate master? Uh, uh, Isaac, yeah. Isaac. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh. I, I, know that, I know that scene. So it's an all one take, kind of like a yep. steady cam shot. Yeah. Um, really good, yeah. So Scott was nice yeah, I said. guy, and he was very. Uh, so I, I message him sometimes, and sometimes he's like, "Ah, maybe why not?" I just wrote him uh, two weeks ago because on Netflix, was it uh, Avengement with Antonio Banderas? Not a yeah. bad yeah. Scott Atkins. Yeah. There was something else yeah. he did with uh, Antonio Banderas, who I was always a fan of his as an actor, and he did a yeah. film with Antonio Banderas. Like, this does not seem like a low budget movie, like an IMDb, I think, yeah. I think it's rated like a six, but this is like eight and a half kind of quality for a lower budget movie, because the story is good, there's a nice twist. I thought Antonio Banderas was excellent in it. Isaac does a scene as the karate sensei teaching this lawyer that lost his family uh, karate. Oh. And he's also going to another guy to learn jujitsu and stuff. I thought it was really great. So I said, I said, sir, I just watched this last night. I got to, you know, just to tell him like honest, truthful praise. Yeah. Um, I really like his movies, you know, and I think it matters yeah. that he's a real martial artist. I mean, yes, he's older than us and he's still doing uh, flying sidekicks like super high and stuff. Yeah. He's even teaching how to do proper kicks like online, but also in workshops. Like like Scott, he teach how to put power behind kicks and hmm. and well I've I have felt that like in Ninja 2, right? We also said like please hit because I'm flying back. And that was real. I just have to make me myself a little bit lighter, but that was real, real, some real kicks. But here's you know you can give a mean kick to, to hurt somebody or to push somebody back. Yeah. And he, he know how to control that amazingly. And, and of course, you still get, get hurt or hit, but in a good way. It, it, it was perfect. And he's very nice. And we have some things in common because we come from the same generation. He's one year younger than me, I think. So yeah. we had a great talk, a great personal talk. He's just, and, he's, he's, one year, he's one year older than me. And our birthday is kind of in the same month, I think. Uh, yeah. But uh, yeah, very humble, very down to earth, Scott. Uh, the real deal. And, and yeah, there's not many like that because, because the movie business, right, can lure, lure you into a lot of other behaviors. 
like drugs or whatever. And I think Scott always stayed really healthy. So you think like he's he professional, he's healthy, like, he shows up on set on time, he does his job, but he doesn't have a big attitude about yeah. it. He's, he's like a professional uh, guy yeah. that deserves, I mean, he does deserve some battery scripts. And I, you know, um, yeah. the, the debt collectors I thought was hilarious. So I love the yeah. debt collectors. I talked about that in the video with him. Ninja 2, I don't remember if I've seen the whole movie or not. I need to, honestly, because I've heard it's very good. Um, mm. But, uh, you know, the Undisputed movies, I guess Undisputed 4 is on Netflix now. I might give that. Yeah. Watch. I don't remember the whole series, which ones were better than the, the others or who was in which ones, uh, all that. But um, but that's cool. You got to, you got to work on that. Uh, yeah. So, I mean, do you think Scott Atkins will, he'll, he'll get more notice now? I mean, he did Man 4. You got to act a bit in Man 4. As you know, the bad marine uh, surgeon or whatever, and now uh, maybe yeah. maybe if he's in, you get, maybe if he gets a decent spot in John Wick Four, maybe Scott Atkins will blow up a little bit more. You know. Yeah, yeah, he's doing like better, bigger movies now. Uh, I'm, I'm not a big fan of this Yip Man stuff, to be honest, because like when when Scott is on the floor and they're doing like all these small chain chain punches on his chest and stuff, like what is this? Like I'm sorry, but I'm not get excited by that, to be honest. Although Donnie is great, uh, yeah, four but, was four, four wasn't as good as the earlier, uh, the earlier Ant Man movies. I mean, I liked them. I, I mean, the first one I think was great. I think the second one was yeah. really good, if I remember correctly. Um, four yeah. was seemed a little rushed, maybe for how big they try to make it. You know, I mean, there were some big scenes in that. Maybe, maybe the yeah. shooting schedule was a little too tight for such a big. Uh, movie and yeah some of the fighting I liked and some of it was like too I mean even the guy who played the karate guy not Scott Atkins but the other uh, karate guys yeah the other karate guy is actually a Wing Chun master who's also a jujitsu guy but he was he was doing karate but he's actually yeah. he's actually the Wing Chun guy uh that's the American, American with that black beard he grew a beard yeah. in the film yeah that's, he's actually a Wing Chun guy <laughs> So, amazing, amazing. I right, know you're, you're a karate guy. Like, okay, I'm, a, I'm a karate guy. So it was a little like two beat and beat and beat and beat. Maybe so the Wing Chun can look, you know, uh, faster kind of stuff. So I mean, I can play all uh, that stuff. And people don't look at my body type. And they don't think I can high kick and they don't think I can do Wing Chun trapping, Kelly trapping type stuff, uh, which is unfortunate. Uh, oh, they don't realize how fast I am. Yeah, like I'm very fast for my size even now and at my age. Like I'm still yeah. very – people don't think I'm fast. Like, yeah, I'm fast. <laughs> like, they don't understand, you know, even at my, my high weight that I'm at now. Yeah. So That's a big selling it. point. A big selling point to be fast for our – like how, how, how many kilos are you right now? Like, I'm heavy. I'm like 100 and 120. Yeah, I'm 100 oh, kilos. Yeah, wow, it should be, be fast should... for for that weight. That's cool. That's that, that's a selling point. That's a, and to be like with our age. To be honest, with our age, yeah. right? I want to encourage people with our age. I'm 47. To be oh. our weight, our age, and and this kind of speed. This is a big selling point. This is matchmaking. If is it, yeah, honestly, I should come spend time with you because if we just make little fight scenes together, it, like it would yeah. show people what my uh, abilities are. But I'm like, if yeah. I can do this sparring, like, I don't know if they're threatened by it or what. It's like, here's my footage sparring all these top fighters in the world. I have one video with uh, 30 fighters in it. Yeah. They're all MMA champions, 13 UFC veterans. Mm -hmm. Okay. The end of it is Wing Chun with Anderson Silva and Big Country Roy Nelson. But I mean, those 30 guys, 28 of those guys, the ones I'm really sparring, have 805 pro fights. So I'm like, if I can high kick and do this stuff fast and even chain punch sometimes a straight blast and crazy yeah. stuff, flying scissor kicks. I mean, I don't have kicks like you, but I have good kicks for a big guy. Like if I can do this yeah. really sparring, obviously I can do this in a choreographed fight scene, but it's like they don't put it together or they're threatened by it or something. I, I, I don't know. Yeah. Maybe, and that is very weird to say. Like the, sometimes you are a threat. For the main guy or just by your looks or maybe some people are scared you overshine 
<laughs> oh yeah, that's that's funny. Van Dam said you're not doing any of that fancy kick. <laughs> he, he didn't want you to yes. take away oh, yeah. from what he's great at, you know, to be honest. Oh yeah. But yeah. But I had some other fights with people I respect, like 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 in the list I mentioned in the beginning. Yeah. There are some of them who actually cut out a few of my kicks. Like I had some 360s and some they cut it out in the choreo. Just they didn't want me to do it. And it's that's why the solution for me is do my own movie. And and right, because I'm, I've always been a little bit in the shadows, like making the, uh, the heroes look good, like reacting on them. So I got good at reactions and stuff and timing. But I've never been able to shine myself, except the Thai TV series. And I was able to show all the moves and that's why it got popular. So now I, I just watch, know that- I've watched a lot lately. Is that the old series you did or is this a different one, a new one you're doing now? Uh, no, no, that was that was also like eight years ago. Those series were eight okay. years ago. Because I, I, I saw a bunch of different clips and it looks like it's kind of soap opera-ish, but there's fight scenes yeah. all the time. And you're, you're like, there is like the main, the main bad yep. guy, like maybe like not the leader, but the main, the main like yep. tough foreigner that they got. Exactly. And so you always get to do all these cool fight scenes and, and you get your, yeah, yeah, yeah. your stunt acting because you're a regular on the series. So you're not, I mean, yeah. same thing. Half my credits are principal acting and half their stunts. So I'm really a stunt actor. We're both actors. We're not, I mean, I'm, yeah. not, I'm not saying I'm the best actor in the world, but we are actors. We're act actually. Yeah, we are actors. Yeah. yeah, we're actors too. Yeah. I always underrated the acting though. So for the last five years, hmm. I really worked on that a lot. So I, I do more characters. We're getting older, right? We're getting more life experience, yeah. right? People die around us. Some happy moments. We can, I think this is our age then because we can carry out more. It's true. Right? There's a lot more, more self, emotion. yeah, there's a lot more yeah. self-knowledge. Once you get late 30s and your 40s, there's a lot more self-knowledge and knowledge about life yeah. and death and family and what's really important and what's not and who you are and where yeah. you're and, um, yeah. Even our face, our facial characteristics. Maybe we're not that flat anymore as a 20 year old, but it kind of shapes itself into character, yeah. right? Like you, you are a great character. Like you could do so many things now. Maybe you couldn't have done it 20 years ago. Me too. And who am I? I just came out of the egg. You know, when you just came out of the egg, the shell yeah. opens, and you're just like new in this world. <laughs> it's like that. Now we're getting more like having more body to it. Well, which is interesting because I, uh, you know, the movies that really sold action, great, great action movies of Viking and me and you all grew up on. Seagal was in his 40s. You look at all the great Stallone movies. Um, yeah. I mean, my favorite, like my favorite, like Cobra, Assassins with Antonio Banderas, funny Tango and Cash. I mean, they weren't, he wasn't super young when he was making those, those films. And then he goes on a Rambo and Rocky and I mean, but but even the last Rambo was, uh, what, 2005 in Thailand. I mean, he absolutely yeah. still sold. I mean, I thought he, he was the most intimidating Rambo in that Rambo, Rambo 4, uh, just called John Rambo. But I mean, if yeah. you look at it, he bulked up and he looked, but he was gritty and his face on the boat. Like, I thought there was good acting. And, and then, like yeah. you said, the facial expressions on the boat ride, like, I don't want to do this, but I'm going to try to keep this lady safe. As he's going down the river uh, into um, Cambodia, right? Cambodia, right? yeah. Um, Thailand, so, Cambodia, yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, yeah. yeah. I think I, we I can like do the, it. Right? I think you're gonna do it. I hope maybe you have someone like me. And you know what? I hope you have me. You Viking Samurai, my friend George Pagasich has his hair and he's a rock star. He's still got a great look. He's the one who should have really been the next seagull. Uh, but uh, hopefully I'm going to do it. And then um, even my friend Remy, the keto guy, bouncer in, in uh, Norway, you know, maybe maybe we can all get together someday and, yeah. and start doing stuff. Because honestly, yeah, these young skinny boys are maybe something to look at or um, <laughs> these young girls, but they can't sell toughness because they're not tough. The younger generation just isn't tough. I'm not going to yeah. believe it. And some of these people have tried. Uh, I don't want to name names, but like they come up in these vampire movies or whatever, and they, they try, 
but it just doesn't sell with the audience because they know yeah. even if they go on steroids and get big, like as they were forced to at a young age, mind you, in the industry, um, it just doesn't sell. They're, you know, they're not tough guys because they're boys. So yeah, they may look pretty yeah. and they may get Instagram followers and Twitter and all that, but it doesn't really sell as the nitty gritty as, yeah. as Stallone did, as Seagal in the early movies did. And I think you can now, maybe even myself now, or, or, or other friends I mentioned, Viking, uh, David, and uh, Remy, the keto guy, and George, my Sistema wizard friend. I don't know if you watch Vikings videos on George, the Sistema wizard, but George is an interesting character uh, in and of itself, too. So we have enough people that could fight you just from just from the YouTube friendships. <laughs> You know? Well, we have possibilities, and we're already talking a little bit behind the scenes about doing some things together. And we did our own stuff here in Bangkok, and we have possibilities to do stuff like like amazing locations. I have a lot of goodwill with, with stunt teams. We can get things done, and and even a mix with USA and Bangkok, Thailand. I would, if you guys are here, you're gonna have the time of your life. Well, as soon as they lift that 14 days, I might come because I'm ready for a vacation pretty soon. And yeah. I love Thailand. I've been three times to Thailand. I love it. My my yeah. backup plan has always been to retire there. I think it's still 50 <laughs> years old and about $26,000 in the bank. So yeah. I'm still a few years away from when I can actually retire. But I mean, if I can, if I can be making movies with you full time there, legally living there at 50, I'll do it. But I, I'm, I'm, I'm happy to come for a month and a half to do something. Yeah. You know, I can be like, hey, I got to go away for a bit. But if I'm going to something, it might be worth it, you know? Uh, yeah. Well, we have some projects uh, pending. We, we, are, we are now working on some other projects. Next week, I have to shoot a fight. But we are in the middle of COVID right now. So we have to find a way to, yeah. to gorilla shoot that. But we will find a way. We just did a previous. Uh, so, so, yeah, we, we, we keep ourselves also busy. Even if there's no Hollywood movies, we keep yeah. going, producing all the time uh so so there's possibilities i i know that because we create ourselves as well and 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 we we can choreograph you know how how we choreograph fights sometimes like with you it would be not too hard to choreograph a cool fight mm -hmm. like same as with mark with the pure martial artists yeah. right if i just tell you right like i'm going to attack you with this and this kick or punch combo i will just ask you how would you react and give me two options, for example, right? So you said, well, I can do this and this, or I can do that and that. And then we choose one of them. And then I said, well, if you do that, I will do this, mm -hmm. right? So I will try to hit you there. Yeah, and you feed off of each other and just make it happen. Yeah, absolutely. Yes. You know, and I'm at the level now, really, I can say, I don't care, just attack me and I'll... <laughs> and then Maybe we'll... you just break my leg. And then we'll go, oh, no, it works. No, but I'll, I'll, I'll block the kick and I'll boom, I'll chop you in the neck and I'm like, oh yeah. We, we pre visit and like, that looks cool. What did you do? I'm like, I don't know. Show me back. I don't know what I did. Because really, yeah. that's how I, I fight nowadays. I mean, I'm so trained yeah. now that I just, I can do, I can do, yeah. well, I can do something weird and you go flying. Um, yeah. So, I, I, you know, it can almost be like, okay, here's option A, here's option B, and let me just do instinctive and see what option C is. That's uh -huh. it. Sometimes you just have to try out. Mostly when it looks good, when it feels good, sorry, when it feels good, it looks good. Yeah. So when you feel like, pop, 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 like, like this kind of flow, or, or it feels real, like then it looks good. Mostly it's like that, 80% of time. Let's go on to, uh, let's go on to uh, US and Steven Seagal. We got to get to Steven Seagal, because you did two okay. things with Steven Seagal, right? So my daddy, he might be my daddy. I don't know if you know, I'm from Michigan, where he's from. Uh -huh. I, I literally did wrist lock, Aikido wrist lock, Kodagishi, Ayadori, Nikio, uh -huh. threw people out of the very same bar, the wagon wheel that he first worked at as a teenager, where he first, as a dishwasher, uh -huh. where he met his karate sensei. Oh, really? And if you okay. look at the face now and stuff, yeah. I don't know, Stephen, I'm ready for a DNA test because... I mean, he just found some son he has in Russia. He said kids from like three or four, maybe maybe the Russian is five different women. Yeah. Uh, maybe maybe he's my real daddy. I don't know. And I'm halfway serious about that because you never know. Oh. 
But uh, oh. so tell me about Steven Seagal. <laughs> well, if he's your real dad. <laughs> Now, see, Steven is great. And uh, there's a lot of things about Steven, this and that. To be honest, I, I love Steven. Luckily, when I did free fight, I have this background of a lot of Aikido. So my wrists are flexible. Mm -hmm. So the first time I met Steven for a movie, I even forgot the name. It was a small movie. I had a small part in there. But I had to fight Steven. And he had to test me. He said, oh, you are that martial artist, right? He didn't know I, I was from, from Jackie Chan movie. I didn't brag about it. It was just like, okay, let give me your hand. So he, he took my hand and he started to, you know, to, to twist it. And the producer and director was next, sitting on a chair down there. And I heard something pop, like puff, like something popped out. And he was like, Ron, are you okay? And I was like, uh, yeah, I'm okay. But he really like got me very hard. He was testing me. He said, okay, you, you should be a little bit more flexible, but uh, we can do it. We can do it. So at the end of that meeting with Sigal, he wanted to shake my hand, right? Like, luckily, I, we live in Thailand. You know why? Because instead of this, I could do like this, you know? So I didn't give him my hand again. I just did like, okay. So never, never, never give, never give Sente Sigal your, your hand to the rest. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Never now, give him a hand. Now, just do like this. He didn't smack you in the balls when he first met you, did he, to see if you had your guard up? He, did, he never gave you a little smack backhand of the balls, did he? Well, yes. Well, yeah, he... He did. You know, on, the, on the second movie, there was a second movie in Philippines, General Commander. Yeah. I had the opening fight with him. And he also tested me again. So now he really, and I'm not joking, he really kicked me in the balls. He did. On the side of the legs. He did, yeah. He said, are you okay with this? Bam. And he, he, did, he gave me a few hits in the stomach, like, boom, you know, can you take it? I said, well, so it's weird because in the tests, in his tests, he is harder than in the real movie. Like when he's really shooting, he's very relaxed and very in control. It's weird. The test is more tough than the than when he's really in, in the in he really wants to, he, he wants to see if you have something real. If he should use yeah. you and respect you a little bit or not. Yes, yes. No, so, you said he kicked yeah. the inside of your leg. What did he do? Like, was it just a surprise? Did he kick the balls or like near them? I, I need uh, to know. Uh, well, the truth, maybe, Ron. Come on, maybe Ron. He didn't, <laughs> he didn't know maybe my my size or something, but yeah, he hit me. And then so, and the funny thing is in the shoot, he hit me three times. It was like, bam, 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 like, like, exaggerated so i think he wanted to get rid of my balls or something but like <laughs> you've been seeing no. all is cock punching something have you seen something. Uh, they made a joke about it they made a, a little video have you seen cock puncher uh I haven't, I haven't you have to look up google steven seagal cock puncher it's the funniest thing in the world he actually oh. did it because so many people in the industry must know he actually likes to smack or kick guys in the balls to see if they're always a martial artist or always on guard to see if they block it or put their legs together. So did he just yeah. surprise you the first time? Did he say, hey, defend yourself? Or did he just walk up and go, the little baby, like, yeah. throw kick to your balls? Yeah. Yes. He doesn't announce it. Yeah. He just, hey, man. So you are this guy. Bam, right? Okay. okay. Let me test you. So you're like, confirming a rumor that uh, someone else said, uh, Stephen Quadros, who used to be the uh, co commentator for Pride. Stephen Quadros <laughs> said that. And then yeah. if you go to some of the stories, which I can't really say with my background, but if you go to some of the Jean LaBelle, Seagal, possible ways, who knows what really happened, but someone claims the way it happened. Yeah. Oh kind yeah, believable. Yeah. And now that you're saying it, and Quadros is saying it, mm. that he just oh here try to put a rear naked choke. I mean, he smacked freaking judo Gene LaBelle in the balls because that's probably what happened. And I oh. Gene didn't tell me. I don't know. But going yeah. off of Viking Samurai's video with a stuntman that was there, that sounds very plausible. And if he did it to you, and he did it to Stephen Quadros. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm a, when I go to meet my daddy, I'm gonna be standing sideways like this. I might give him my yeah. leg, but I'm gonna I'm gonna stand sideways. Well, you're not yeah. me, you're not getting me, Stephen. Yeah. Oh, backwards, backwards. Next time when you see Stephen, yeah, yeah. Don't don't be frontal. Yeah. 
<laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what Quadro also... said. He said he heard it, and he always would walk up to him and stand side of sideways. <laughs> oh man, this is funny. Yeah. Well, there's also a story also on set about three. Also, remember the three guys in the Van Damme movie? We talk about me. Yeah. Like, you don't do your kicks. Malik. The guy next to me, the bouncer. There's also three guys in the Skull movie, a similar kind of story. And uh, maybe I tell you in a, in a quick way, yeah, like there were, there were three guys in actually in the original scene, like three gangsters. I was one of them. I was the youngest. There were two guys and in the, in the dressing room, they were talking about acting. Like, oh, acting for me is important and I'm a good actor. And they were talking like they were the best actors of, of in the foreigners in the Philippines. Like, they, they look good. They talk about this and that and a little bit bragging about themselves. So they were, they seem very secure. So when they enter the scene, we enter a toilet where Sigal is like doing a pee and then he looks around and then we enter. And then the first guy came, the, the actor. And I, I remember Sigal is like, and the guy had to point a, a gun to Sigal. He was shaking, he was scared of Sigal. So he was like, uh, surrender like this. He was shaking and the director was like, what, what the hell is that? You know, he's scared of him. Like, we can't have this guy out. So the first guy was sent out, was sent out. Second guy. Okay, so one guy was sent home. There were two guys left. So we, we do, we, we retake the whole scene, going to the toilet. <laughs> now with two people. It's real. That guy also got scared of, of Seagal and he, he tried to be impressive, but uh, he looked too nice. Like he was like a baby. And he talked about acting, this and this. And, 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 she, and Chigal said, sorry, I don't like this guy. Like, he's too nice, out. So I was the only one left. So the producer wasn't happy with this toilet anyway. So he kicked the whole toilet. He just beat the whole toilet because some pieces fell off. It was a cheap toilet, a cheap uh, art department. And he just kicked the front door of one of those toilets. And he just broke down the whole set. He said, okay, we're going to reshoot this. And, uh, and then we had to do the, the fight in the parking with Seagal, but it was not planned. It was supposed to be a fight in the toilet with three guys. Yeah. But they just destroyed the whole set. They kicked the whole set. Like the, the producer was also a big guy. So stuff can change even uh, while shooting, yeah. right? But the guys who talk about acting and they are the best, blah, blah, blah. And, and they got fired. So it's, sometimes it's better to to just be humble and be in your character and 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 that but but yeah the guy literally was shaking in front of Seagal the first one I, we, I saw it on the monitor because I was I didn't come around the corner yet well the first he time was he like, went, first time you went to see him I mean he had even still he has a very big presence he's a tall guy oh, you're tall, six feet, oh. but he's like six five six four six five he's a big yeah. guy but the way he carries himself is yeah. He has a strong presence, yes? Like the first time you met him or went in the room, he kind of has a very strong presence, right? Yep. And that's why people said uh, Seagal can't fight or he isn't tough. Believe me, if you're in the hands of Seagal, it might be game over. Like, like, like I don't talk about you, but in general, like, like this guy is he's I tough. I had a guy on my podcast a few weeks back who yeah. has more martial arts black background than me, four black belts. Uh, like yeah. eighth degree in Japanese Jiu Jitsu, uh, fourth degree in Judo, fourth degree in Karate, and first yeah. degree in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. And he was like a New York cop. I mean, he's been in shootouts and stuff. I mean, he's a tough guy and a fugitive task force. He runs uh, Henzo Gracie Vietnam. Yeah. And he said that Seagal's legit. He went to Seagal's house and they messed around a bit. He said, he, he says he's 100% yeah. legit. Oh, he's definitely legit. Yeah. And he likes he likes knives as well. So he makes he's very passionate about martial arts. Mm. Like like he has his own knives. He makes his own knives from wood. He carves them, and he just wears them with them. So he has all these pockets in his long jackets, sleeve jackets. And he have to be careful. Like he have some hidden <laughs> hidden weapons over there. Like so well, I he carries here. about eight handguns on him, a bulletproof vest. He pulls up in a bulletproof uh, like yeah. big SUV sometimes. Yeah. Yeah, so I heard yeah, so body that there's a lot of pistols in it. He usually carries a 1911 at least. 
And yep. uh, but he also he so at the end of that the end scene where you kind of double run Baliki, he pulled out like oh, a right, big, yeah. He pulled out a Kirkra. I love Kirkra style blades. Yeah. And so I had to uh, double one guy. Yeah. Yeah, I had to double the, the main guy, the Italian guy with the Kirkra, yeah. Yeah. That was cool. I was a little worried though, like okay, um, because I'm you know you're on this bridge in Philippines in the night. Yeah. This bridge was closed, and then you see Seagal, like a tall guy coming at you with a Gurkha. And then, okay, there's fire in the back, you know, it's atmosphere. And then you're walking towards Seagal. And then you have to do the initial hits. Oh, man, there's something going in your heart. There's something going through your mind. When I hope you I hope the, the blade to see if it was a dull blade. It looked like a real blade. When he yes. first pulls it out, it looked real. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We had a prop one later, okay. but no, no, there's a real one too, and it was super sharp. Like if you let it go on your arm, it, you're gonna have a cut. But that's yeah, just for the insert. That's for the insert. Maybe you're scared he grabs the wrong one, or the starting of the scene, it sounded like he had the real one. Well, that can happen. That can happen. But yeah, we were swinging that and this and this, and he had to stab me. But yeah, it's still sharp, even the wooden one. Yeah. It's like wooden and they paint it and stuff. It's still sharp. So if he really goes into you, that you're going to feel that. But no, he was absolutely cool and in control. Huh? Like, but, but yeah, but just this imaginary, ima ima imagine when you just enter and, and there's Seagal there and there's you on the bridge entering in the night with fire and smoke. And yeah. it's just, it's just epic. It's, it's a very good memory, you know? Cool. And so Seagal is the, a gentleman. That was the end scene, but it sounded like when the bathroom scene got scrapped, you, you fought him and got hit by him on the bridge earlier in the movie. Is that right? Like, was there two uh, there were, things? Yeah, there are some other scenes with some shooting. And my friend, Byron Gibson, he has a bazooka. He does stuff there. There's some fighting going on. I wasn't there that time. But yeah, there's more. I haven't seen it all even, to be honest. But yeah, there's more. There's more. That's cool, man. Yeah, it was very uh, interesting, and we got the funny story that he checked you, he kicked you in the balls, and then what? He came up and punched you a couple times, pretty hard in the body, to see if you were a pussy. Or yeah, not. yeah. It's the Steven Seagal but, check. You know what? I think it's his kind of no, not sarcasm. It's his kind of humor, you know, to to play around a little bit. I, I I like him. Like it's just his way, a little bit of you know testing, and I don't know. I I I, I like him. I'm gonna, I, I just, shh, don't tell anyone. When I finally do someday go to meet my perhaps biological father, maybe, I don't know, I'm gonna uh, wear a steel tie cup. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, I, yeah, I got a surprise for Steven. I'm gonna <laughs> wear a tie cup. <laughs> yeah, some wrist bandages, some wrist uh, protection. Yeah, maybe, maybe it's a good <laughs> idea. No, I, I mean, like this, I can kind of take, but this Nikio hurts me bad. I can't take that yeah. at, at all. So yeah, and no, he really, he really yanks it. He really yanks it. This is not. If you've not, never not seen, you gotta watch my real Steven Seagal Shakito versus MMA BJJ fighters. Like I'm actually pretty good with these locks. Like I'm pretty legit yeah. with doing those, even against like jujitsu people and MMA guys. So oh, um, it's very cool. Those locks are great, also for movies. Like I use them a lot. Like you punch and then you take over. Like yeah. punch, take over, and buff. It's a very good combination. Also, when you twist in a group fight, so you can twist somebody around and then kick somebody else, and it's very cool to to know Aikido. Yeah, we movies. saw a lot of that in John Wick Three. I think maybe because he had hurt me a lot of yep. Kodagishi in um, John Wick Three, and then also in Concrete Blonde. So I have a video mixing real footage and movie footage. I have one on my YouTube channel. That's just uh, I think it's called Kodagishi in Kodagishi yeah. in movies in real life, and it has some good footage you should look at because some of that in the concrete block, like it's three cops coming together with like uh, sticks, and she kind of like you know to turn one into the other kind of thing. You know, it looks it looks you know it looks pretty good. Sometimes okay. it's hard to sell a woman beating up a room full of twenty or thirty guys if they haven't trained their whole life. Now, if it was a girl yeah. just won the gold medal. Uh, in the Olympics the other night in the uh -huh. karate forms. Yeah. Yeah. Did you see her performance? The Spanish girl won gold medal. I usually don't. Uh, you need to watch it. I know that girl. 
Yeah, do you the highlights? I'm so happy she won. She was so focused. Her Kia, yeah. I was like, like her, she had the real samurai focus. Like it was wow. amazing. And she beat out the favorite, like the Japanese girl who was kind of the favorite to win. The, the Japanese girl, yeah. She's the favorite. She's very good too. But if she can beat the Japanese girl, then that means I think I think I think she got intimidated from her Kia from the the Spanish girl, I think, went before. I'm not sure because I just watched highlights. But I I, I, uh, I saw the Japanese girl go after her. And I think yeah. she wasn't as centered and as focused because yeah. she could tell what a good performance of pure focus um, and the Kia's, yeah. the yells from the, the Spanish uh, woman gold medalist. That could be, uh, yeah. Any, and yeah, anyway, the Olympic. It was great. Olympics. So it's a lot um, of stress. Before we get to what you're doing now, to kind of wrap up what you're doing now and focusing on, and and um, uh, I'd like to yeah. hear about any other stunts or you want to talk about. Um, you said you you, uh, you shot with uh, one of the guys from the raid in the movie too. Yeah, that was triple threat. So so I had this fight with Tony Ja, and at the end, Iko always comes in and shoot me in the back. Ah, that's right. I I, I think that's a kind of mistake because. For me, it's an heroic way to die. If a hero shoots you in the back, I think that's the best way to die. Like for a hero, because I was still fighting with Tony with his car and bit, and I almost sliced his neck, and then I got killed in the back. Yeah, I thought you had the glasses. You had a cool look in that. Did you like it? I thought you looked when I, I watched it late at night. I go, "That's my friend Ron," and because we've been talking for like <laughs> a year and a half. So when I watched it, I yeah. didn't know you were in it. And uh, yeah, yeah. So I, I just got happy when I was watching. Uh, well, well, Jesse Johnson gave me glasses because me and Scott, we have a little bit. Okay, Scott is, I think, looks better than me, like more handsome. So he's a handsome guy. But for me, they, they gave me glasses because we would be a little bit similar. And I was like, oh, no, not those glasses, you know, to, to Jesse, the director. He said, no, 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 you are German. This is your character, like this nerdy guy, crazy yeah, about uh, I liked violence. It. But it worked out. It it's like, maybe you look, yeah, this guy's the smart guy. Maybe he makes bombs or does computers or <laughs> something. Like it looked, it looked, I thought it was pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah, you you gotta be a character. So I I I I realized later, you gotta be a character, whatever it is. You have to be different. And and those glasses and the thing makes it different. So you gotta be, yeah, a character. It's better. No, and, and you earlier, is it a Tekken movie I've seen? Were you because I'm getting confused. There's the were you yeah. the Russian character that does all the Sambo in the video games? Okay, so there's the two Tekken movies. Yeah. There's a Tekken movie in 2000, which is uh, Avenging Fist. And I was like Brian Fury in there, but they had to change the name to uh, because of the rights with Nemco. But that was actually a first Tekken. It's Sammo Hung and, and uh, um, one of the other guys uh, from the Jackie Chan team. There's Sammo Hung, there's... Yeah, there those three guys in, in, in these Jackie Chan uh, movies. Uh, and, and he was there. So, but later there was Tekken Part 2. Tekken Part 2. And that was the, the, the official Tekken 1 I was not in. Tekken 2, I play a character. They just made it up. They didn't follow the Tekken story. It was just a made up story. They just called it Tekken. They got the rights for it. Uh, and the fans didn't like it because it, it has it nothing to do, with to do with the game. Yeah. Tekken. So, People feel a little bit deceived watching the movie. The fight was okay. It's not too bad. Uh, I don't like the editing, to be honest. So I don't really use it for my show reel. Uh, it's a little bit slow paced, but the shooting went very smooth. You know, we had a great coordinator. Uh, he did a good job on it. Uh, it, it was flawless. We didn't have to, we didn't make any mistake that, sh that shoot. Yeah. It was flawless. And Kane Kusuki, the, the son of Shokusuki, the ninja, right? Now he's doing movies himself. He's great. Kane. He also fought Scott Atkins in the ninja, uh, the last the end fight, Ninja of a Tear, okay. Shadow of a Tear. Uh, he, he's great. I wish to see more of, uh, of him, actually, of Kane Kusuki. He, he's great. And it went really well. Well, but that cool. was I, mean, I, I, I watched Street Fighter, Return of the Street Fighter, and Sister Street Fighter Triple, uh, and that's what they're watching in Tarantino's first script he sold in True Romance. That's what him and the call girl for his birthday go to watch. It's a 
Kung Fu Triple Theater. Shokusugi is the Street Fighter, Return of the Street Fighter, and Sister Street Fighter. You can kind of see well, it. We're just uh, just a little well, movie uh, trivia for um, True Romance, which is one of my well, favorite movies. I think True Romance was a really good script. Uh, I know um, Pray for That. Pray for That. Have you seen that movie? Like, I was probably 10 years old. Pray for That. And Shokusuki, with his son, his son was very young. And it was his son on a small bike, had some weapons on there and and his father was the ninja pray for that with shokusuki okay i i gotta find some of these and, and a lot i watched as a kid and i don't remember which ones i've yeah. seen that's great so ron tell us what you've been up to lately obviously the world has tried to break people you're a very positive guy uh you're trying to do your own movie now is that what's going on yeah yeah well, okay. So first of all, I just came out with my story on Viking Samurai about my stunts. Mm -hmm. So to clarify that, what really happened there, and that's a big relief for me after 23 years. Uh, so now I'm I'm not talking about that too much anymore. That is done. Uh, so I'm very positive, as you said, right? I'm doing my own movie. It's called Last Fighter. I'm in the preparations of that. It's still I still have a few script, small script changes, but it's beautiful story it's like the modern rocky with with really like the motivation you see in the 80s 90s in those movies yeah as a rocky, man you, gonna karate kid. you left the theater and you were throwing punches and you were excited and you went to the sign up at the gym again or buy a leader weight set yes. or a punching bag and you started working out like good over yeah. evil or, you know try triumph over bullies passion yeah. fighting for your family the, the, honestly yeah. it's junk uh, hollywood's putting out just crap so many yeah movies. i think so i'm like i would i haven't been to a theater in a year and a half yeah i, I agree I, with I, you. I gotta decide if i'm gonna start even supporting that business still because yeah it's trash so much yeah. of it coming out is trash i've watched a couple good ones i thought nobody was really funny yeah. i thought nobody was really good but most of the movies okay. coming out nowadays was uh, I don't like it. Yeah. It doesn't motivate me. Even the martial art movies. Like I will not say any names, but it's like it's more a showcase of beating people. But it's not matchmaking anymore. It's not exciting. And there's no training scenes. There's no good music where you can train on. Where is that gone? And of course, I, I don't know. It's just missing. So a lot of people saying that. So I want to bring that back. But a lot of people advise me like, no, don't do that go for these mercenary movies and go for this more like whatever John Wick style and stuff I said that's not me I'm sorry uh, I'm gonna go back to the 80s 90s and I'm gonna mix it like a, a new concept but with that feel of the 80s 90s and I, I, I just follow my feeling mm -hmm. and I'm not I'm not gonna follow the crowd with this I don't want to follow the crowd when you follow the crowd you are behind I just want to do something original again yeah like 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 i said i'm gonna do the 80s 90s but it's gonna be an original version of this of course right but but with that motivation in their heart a movie with it's heart so hard, yeah i mean yeah. Some, in some movies i did this low budget wrestling movie i don't know if it got ever got released like an amateur wrestling high school wrestling uh, -huh. uh ken charmack eventually was in it kurt angle and I don't even know if it uh, uh, ever got released, but, um, you know, it, but it had heart. So even if it's lower budget, if you have heart, it matters. If it's another yeah. lower budget mercenary movie, it's not going to live up to John Wick. You don't have the budget and the shooting schedule to make everything look like a John Wick 2 looks. John Wick 2 was amazing. It really was. Yeah. But if yeah. you just make another generic, uh, you know, I mean, I want to do action movies, in this, but you have to have gritty character or, or a good story. The story and the feelings. Movies yeah. used to give you emotions. doesn't matter yeah. what genre. It used to actually convey an emotion. You thought about yeah. it afterwards. You went out for coffee with your date afterwards to talk about the movie and have a piece of body or something. Like, there yeah. used to be feeling involved. And nowadays, it's kind of like, eh, that was okay. Next. That was okay. Like, maybe yeah. I'll watch... Sometimes I watch two Netflix movies a night. By the next day, I don't even remember what I watched. 
Yeah, that's it. Yeah. Well, there's a new movie. It's called Nobody. There was this bus scene. Yeah. The bus. I, I, I liked it. Yeah. I got off kind of into that. Like, okay, of course, it's not a rewinder. Like, you see it one time. Okay, great. But I got off kind of into it. Like, that's quite cool. But it's not a rewinder like those old movies with Van Damme, you know? Like, you, you're going to watch those movies again and again. Yeah. Like Rocky IV. I just played it nonstop. Yeah, anytime it's on TV, on you it. sit down and watch. I went to, uh, to, to film my um, film yeah. my self-defense DVD, my Commanders of Street Jiu-Jitsu DVD on uh, BJJ Fanatics. When I went to film it, I had to go to sleep to film the first day. But Rocky yeah. Four was on in my hotel. Oh, you oh can't cool. Turn it off. When it's on, you're Good like, just, you always go, I'm just yeah, but you always go, I'm just gonna watch five minutes. Have you ever had <laughs> you're flipping through and Rocky's on? Have you ever yeah. gone, I'm just going to watch five minutes? You can't just watch five minutes of Rocky IV. It doesn't yeah. matter during the movie you start watching it. You end up watching the whole thing. And it's weird, right? Like, it's just all also the characters. And the fights are not even too complicated, right? It's just how they bring it. it the music, the characters, and the atmosphere, Good. and the sweat, and the... It's, 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 just, it's amazing how they do that. And... and so yeah, yeah, people should not forget about that in making movies those days, these days. And they think they think they need this kind of template to 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 be modern or but people I think people getting bored of it, even about some marvels. So to be honest, there are so many marvels which are they're great, but it's so much and so many and there's a few yeah, that it's I not, it's it's not. Going out on it was kind of the same thing, same thing, and there's kind of a uh, for male, yeah. male like formula to it, and if it's like, oh, Hulk has to fight bigger, mean Hulk, Spider Man yeah. has to fight bigger, mean, well, Venom. Okay, Venom had a fight bigger, meaner CGI Venom. They did it with Hulk, they did it with Hulk again, they did it with Venom, they did it with yeah. Iron Man, and now Iron Man's fighting big Iron Man suit. They, I'm like, can you come yeah. up with an original idea, please? Just use an original idea for the end battle or whatever, like the same thing over and over again. I mean, yeah. some of the movies I really liked and some of them man, I'm not so keen on. But uh, yeah. I mean, it helps to work on them. I probably shouldn't even say that. But it is what it is. They kind of go in their socially uh, direction. And uh, yeah. I'm in the more good versus evil, fight for what's right, Karate Kid, Rocky, um passion kind of thing and that i think you're gonna do ron i wish you all the luck it sounds like you're really gonna do some things besides this project recently you did like what was it the uh, uh, bad boys in bangkok or something like that was that your most yeah kind of recent thing yeah. yeah well i haven't seen that, it yet if i can find it i'll watch it i would like to watch it yeah. cool well it's that that movie we shot in uh, four years and it was just like, look, we have to do our own project now, right? So we started like almost five, six years ago and we shot it in four years. We just say every week or every month, we're gonna shoot one scene. Wow. And we, we managed to finish the movie. Of course, there's all different levels of quality. One thing was shot on a phone, one was shot on this, but we managed to get it out on Amazon. And it became, the good thing is the director had this vision to put it all together in his mind. So he kept he 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 kept the the core, and he he knew how to put it together. So we sometimes we just go to a crocodile farm and shoot a mafia scene there with crocodiles in the background. We went to some gritty alleys in Bangkok <laughs> to you just say let's start fighting. And so me and Mark we we prepared just one day before, and we do a fight scene there. We shot it in three hours, and people pass by. They say what's going on. He said no, don't worry, you know, <laughs> we just keep shooting our scenes. And we, we shot in those go-go bars, like we had the camera on secretly. We had some weird stories, but we made a movie. And of course, next movie, we're gonna have a little bit better camera, better sound and whatever, but you gotta start somewhere. Don't be shy to just start and- That's great. It's like a snowball. So some you kind of did, that, you did that with your buddies and kind of ma managed yeah. to make it happen? Because I know you- Just do you, it. You invited Mark out, and now you're pra you're praising Mark a lot, and you guys are doing stuff together. Who is the director of of what's it called, and where can they find it? Tell people where to watch it. Plug the movie again on Amazon. Okay, uh, well, English Dogs in Bangkok. You can watch 
now even on uh, for free if you're an IMDb Pro member, and you can watch it on Amazon, on Vudu, um, not Netflix, but but yeah, you can watch it in uh, in Vudu, Amazon. Maybe I can get it on Vudu. English Dogs in Bangkok, right? Yes, it's called English Dogs in Bangkok, That's and nice. there, there might be a part too. Uh, uh, which it, it's a good story, you know, like my, the, the, the director have some real life experience with some funny stuff. So we just put it in like some real stuff, like what's really happening, you know? Uh, yeah. Yeah. But crocodile farms, feeding body parts to crocodiles and stuff. And what was that? What's the name of the director? You said he kept a good vision. So uh, Byron Gibson, Byron Gibson. He played in only God forgives. He was the guy who got, uh, he got like uh, stabbed by a knife in the eye and uh, in only God forgives, forgives. Uh, his name is Byron Gibson, a great guy. He's my best friend. He lives in England right now. He's in England okay. shooting uh, another movie. And I shoot the other half here in Bangkok right now. So it's a mix of England and Bangkok. Cool. It's about- well, I mean, if you make it too, I've always, you know, I've never met Michael Bisping. He's kind of funny. He grew on me over the years, but I'd love to- oh, he's cool. I'd, I'd love to fight Michael Bisping in a movie too. You know, he thinks he's uh, Mr. Lock, Stock and Two Smoking Barrels now. So, you know, maybe, maybe in, uh, in two, uh, I can, I can beat up Michael Bisping. That would be cool. Oh, great. Michael is a great guy. I was his double one time, but, but I didn't have so much hair in the back at the time. So I couldn't double him, but I was there on set. Oh, yeah? I, I just helped him out doing the scenes. He did everything himself. Michael Bisping. He, he's cool. He's cool. You you will have a nice fight with him. Like a real, can be very nice. I think so. I mean, I've actually, he's one of the few guys that I've never bumped into. I've never met him. Oh, he's cool. Yeah. So, uh, but you know, I, I, he's been getting more and more movies and you spot him and stuff. And um, so I wanted to kind of throw that out there. Uh, Ron, where can, uh, what's your, your YouTube channel starting to really take off? A lot of fight scenes and yeah. motivational stuff and uh, how to do kick tricks and stuff. <laughs> yeah i love to share the passion with the people because i i coming from where i come from myself right some people help me in my life with, with this and i want to share that feeling like with others this, this motivation this passion i want to share that with others that is a part of my goal yeah well so it's just your, under your name ron, your, your youtube channel is ron smornberg right ron smornberg Okay. Ron, Ron and then Smorn. Well, work. hopefully this helps you get noticed too and kind of follows up on all the videos with Viking Samurai. Um, also, I, we did, so to, uh, today, I haven't watched the video yet. Did you just get praised by um, the UFC fighter, uh, Stephen Wonderboy uh, Thomas? Thompson? Thomas? Yes, exactly. Yes, yes, that's amazing. The great karate uh, fighter. Talk yes. about it. You mean the, the UFC fighter? Yeah. Yes. He mentioned my name in, uh, in, in one of the, he said the, the best five, the five best action movies for me in my life is, is uh, I think John Wick. It is uh, Troy. And on number three, there's Who Am I? Like the final fight in the movie, Who Am I? And he mentioned my name. And he mentioned that, that, that the guy with the kicks and stuff and, and it, it impacted him a lot. And, and that is just a big honor for me. Well, he's like, an amazing kicker. Isn't that interesting yeah. that he's the amazing kicker in, kicker in the UFC? That yes. him and Van Damme, they pay attention to who else is amazing kickers and motivation. Van Damme knew who you were. And he, this great UFC fighter yeah. that's gone to a draw for the title, the best karate guy in the UFC currently, probably. Right? Absolutely. But he knows who you are. That's, yeah. that's, 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 that means something, Ron. That means something. That's good. That's really good. I'm very honored. I'm very honored. Uh, I just, I, normally I never always talk too much, but of course I just have to stand for justice, what I did with my stunts to make, put that right. And we just try to motivate everyone in this business. I'm very connected with the real martial art people. And let's keep sharing what you do also with this, with your, videos yeah. let's keep sharing the love for the art let's keep it up yeah what? if you got what other good people now? that i can connect with please help, help me connect with some good people because like i said i have bad experience uh stunt coordinator yeah. I, I go to i think i'm going to try out to be someone stunt double and he has me do something else 
and they put me in a movie yeah. two days before it was released, well, the day before it was released. No release, no money, no nothing. And no one ever stood up for me. SAG didn't stand up yeah. for me. I'm literally in this big budget movie and I didn't get a penny and I never signed a, a, a release for my likeness or anything. It's crazy some yeah. of the way people do you wrong. So I've had some bad yeah. stuff in this industry and I'm hoping I still can make a couple good things happen or get in a European film or a Thai film or Russian Absolutely. film or something like that. So, uh, Ryan, Absolutely. Any, anything else you want to say? I think we pretty much summed it all up for a couple hours. Yeah. Well, I just want to say that uh, in life and in this business, surviving is winning. Uh, success is defined by some people with, with money only. Uh, for me, success is uh, doing what you love and, and wake up with this fire every day, right? And having new goals and keep like you, right? You want to still do this and this and this. And it, believe me, it just starts right now. And and then and, and keep the fire. That is the thing. And now we, we are in hard times for everyone. And there's COVID, and there is this, but it, it only makes us stronger. And use this time to prepare yourself to get ready in acting, make some new combos. I define my own style. I'm gonna show you here. You see that on the on the board there? That is my research start style, my own fighting style. Mm -hmm. I'm 47, I just designed my own style. Like it's never too late. So I wanna just empower everyone, like believe in yourself and think on the long term, have this vision and let nobody steal it from oh. you. Let nobody oh. take away your motivation. There's mm -hmm. no naysayers. Don't accept them in your life and choose the right people in your life and, and life will be different. And you are the casting director of your life. That's what I want to say. Yeah, I think I think you proved it, Ron, because, I mean, you were a young boy with a dream to kick like Van Damme and learn to take care of yourself. <laughs> and then you, you, you've made it all happen. You live in Thailand, probably my favorite country, one of my favorite countries oh. around the world, Thailand and Japan. Oh, yeah. You have a, a, a nice family, right? Yeah. So yeah, uh, lovely. And you're working in the movies, and you're doing your dream. And anyone who ever talked bad about you in the past, you did it. I got a lot of naysayers, and I didn't do yeah. as much as I had hoped to, but I did a lot of cool stuff. I've been in yeah, exactly. countries. I've done I've done some movies. I've done some TV. I've done some fights. I've done some pro wrestling. Yeah. I, I teach self defense to help people protect themselves and to protect their families. And, you know, uh, I think that's just the martial arts way is, is following yeah. your own path. And uh, you did a lot too. Yeah. Then you are living it. You're living it as well. You're living it. And, and this is amazing, you know? And of course there's always the naysayers, but that means you're on the map. If, if you were not, you know, you're not a threat or you're not someone they wouldn't care. You know, yeah. that means you are doing stuff. And also always when you do stuff, there is the uncreator. It's just a natural thing. But the more you do, the more uncreated you get. It's normal. So that means you're on the right way. I would say uh, let's 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 all keep going. Let's let's do something amazing. When you're in Bangkok, let's let's do something very powerful. I wanted to go back let's to Koi Samui, but okay, maybe yeah. maybe I'll come to Bangkok just to see you and fight scene. So let's stay in touch. Hopefully they lift the 14 day hold soon and and yeah, yeah, I'd love it. In like six months from now or whatever, if I can get to Bangkok and do something with you, I think that'd be awesome. really good. And I show you around. I show you the places where we shot the previous movie. I show you around, show you the stunt teams. Maybe you only have to buy a single ticket. Yeah. Uh, maybe because you will never return to the US, maybe. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Captain Crap. <laughs> Take care, okay? Take care. Have a nice okay. one. I'm going to stop recording. Thanks, everybody. Please thumbs up, Bye. share, subscribe, and put a comment below the video.